There are new questions this morning about just how high up the alleged cover-up of the government's failed Fast and Furious program goes. The program was supposed to track illegal weapon sales along the Mexican border. Instead, it allowed guns smuggled. It allowed guns to be smuggled across the border, unchecked with a device in it for, that you could buy at Radio Shack to track those guns as they assumed they'd go into the hands of uh, narcotics traffickers and gun traffickers. Right. California Congressman Daryl Issa has been leading the investigation. He joins us live. Uh, Congressman, clearly this was a, a kind of a boneheaded program because some of the uh, thousands of the guns wound up on the other side of the border and at least one was used to kill a U.S. Border Patrol agent. And now it looks like is there a cover-up going on or what? You know, there's been a cover-up going on since Senator Grassley first asked for information after Brian Terry, the Border Patrol agent you mentioned, was killed. And remember, if all these had gone south of the border, their plan kind of would have worked as planned. Only Mexicans would have died. In this case, this thing became unraveled when so many of these uh, weapons ended up still north of the border and killed at least one uh, U.S. federal agent. Right. So Fast and Furious is in existence. We all agree it was a debacle. We don't know how high this went up. For example, the Department of Justice has jurisdiction over the ATF. The ATF acting director appointed by, uh, appointed by the Obama administration is saying, look, there's someone trying to get, uh, get me out of here, and I don't want to take the blame for this. This wasn't my program. This was from the Department of Justice. Has Kenneth Melson said that Eric Holder was responsible for this program? No, he hasn't. Uh, what he does know, of course, is that Lanny Brewer's part, uh, the assistant uh, of, of justice, had to authorize the wiretaps, which he characterized when he read them after the fact, made him sick to his stomach, because that's when he began to realize that DEA and other uh, parts of justice knew what they told uh, ATF they were looking for, meaning that ATF was never really in the loop, either here or in Mexico. Imagine this, though. In Mexico, in Mexico City, if you found a fast and furious weapon yeah. and you plugged it in, what you got was a network error. You didn't even get a valid answer because they, they wanted to keep people there sure. from knowing anything about these weapons. I know you want to get to the bottom of what happened, but the administration is stonewalling you. Oh, absolutely. And whether it's uh, Brian Terry's family or... Uh, uh, Jaime Cepeda, uh, the other uh, agent that was likely killed with fast and furious weapons, they have, an they have a right to know what this was all about and why, quite frankly, their family members died in what shouldn't have happened. And understand, this was, not, this was as boneheaded, even if it went right, right. as could be, mm -hmm. and of course it went very wrong. And one thing, Brian, there was only one time in which that Radio Shack GPS was put in, one time in which another GPS was put in. The rest of the time, these weapons went walking with absolutely no chance of tracing them till you found them at the scene crazy. of the tr crime. Absolutely. Crazy. Uh, upending the whole premise of the program. Uh, Congressman exactly. Ice, I know you're not going to stop investigating. We'd no. like to track it with you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Will do. Thanks a lot, Brian. Thank you, Steve.